You're watching The Breakfast Meeting right here on NBS Television, your political command center. My name is Mebo Twegumiezake. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are. And I hope it is a good morning because in life there are usually so many uh, disruptors. And of course, for the past months, the unfortunate, I've kept calling it disruptor, is the COVID-19 pandemic and all oh, how it has affected our education, even as the Christmas season beckons universities, uh, schools, finally students that are actually uh, trying to do final, you know, or probably touch ups before the Christmas holiday. Well, universities and all the other institutions can say it's been tough, but guess what? Some, even during the COVID-19 lockdown, were actually able to power up they are e-learning centers. And of course, on our breakfast meeting this morning, we have guests from Uganda Matters Universities, one of those institutions that powered up their e-learning centers, but at the same time, for the students of that university, and of course, all the stakeholders that are watching right now, and all of you hoping to take your students to Uganda Matters University in Kozi, there's graduation on Friday. But of course, before we get talking, uh, let's introduce our guests uh, this morning. Professor Ngabirano Max Maximiano, you're welcome. Thank you. Earlier, I was telling you that Maximiano is a very strong name. It sounds Italian and in Spanish and so Catholic. And I am more Catholic than that name. <laughs> <laughs> you're more Catholic than the name. Yes. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, Professor Angabirano is a professor at Uganda Matters University in Kozi. And of course, we're also privileged to have the Deputy Vice Chancellor. You're very welcome, Professor Michael Mawa. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, a little I know about Uganda Matters University in Kozi is that it's closing into 30 years since it was founded, right? Yes. Yeah, and it has actually ushered out over 20,000 graduates within the 27 years and so. But of course, we would want to know more about Uganda Matters University in Kozi before we delve into the upcoming graduation on Friday. So, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, you can take us through. Thank you very much, uh, Mabur, for um, uh, inviting us to be part of this uh, breakfast. So, uh, Uganda Matters University was established in 1993. Uh, it's established by the Conference of the Bishop, the Catholic Bishops of Uganda um, as a higher education institution to provide training uh, for graduates with skills and values to be able to serve uh, our society. Um, Uganda Matters University began with the uh, two faculties, uh, the Faculty of Business Administration and Management, and the Institute of Ethics and Development Studies, uh, to contribute to uh, addressing the human resource gaps uh, in our country. Uh, the university has grown since uh, 1993. Um, now we have uh, 13 academic units, uh, seven faculties, uh, three schools, and two institutes. Um, and these um, are contributing different uh, disciplines in the area of agriculture, the area of education, in the area of health and medicine, in engineering, in architecture, um, uh, in science in general, um, in humanities and social sciences, and, and, and other disciplines that uh, are running within the university. Um, the vision of this university is to be a, a university that is nationally and internationally uh, known for excellence. Mm -hmm. And that for us is a, the center of our, of our activities. Excellency and quality is the, the bedrock of our um, services to humanity. Um, Uganda Matters University um, has been established uh, specifically to address the issues of moral uh, um, challenges within our society. So in all that we do, in our teaching, in our research, in our community services, um, ethical values guide our practice, mm -hmm. guide our activities, and guide our services. So in whatever we do, we pay attention to the ethical values. So in brief, this is Uganda Matters University, um, as you rightly mentioned. It's now about uh, 28 years. We're coming to 30 years yeah. uh, of existence. Should be proud. We are. We are indeed proud of, <laughs> of, of the journey we have taken from a humble beginning yeah. 
to this great university, uh, which received a, a civil charter in 2000, uh, 2005 mm -hmm. um, from the government of Uganda. So we are officially a granted charter university. Okay, and speaking of that pride, currently what's the enrollment in terms of the part-time, distance learning, or you know, the university of students? Um, the overall en enrollment of students is well above 5,000 mm -hmm. uh, students. Um, we, the largest number of our students are on distance learning, ah. and, and we are happy about that. Uh, we started many years back uh, to provide education to those who may not physically come and study from the university campuses, mm -hmm. uh, but to be able to reach out to them and provide uh, quality education through. Uh, we started with the traditional distance learning programs, um, preparing modules, uh, giving to the students, introducing them, giving self-study materials mm -hmm. for them to study from wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, we also began to build capacity in uh, online teaching, mm. uh, technology enhanced teaching and learning. And uh, this is where COVID found us. No, I know, because uh, uh, I was going it. to say, oh, probably for the distance learning as a university, we haven't been uh, affected much because it's mostly the new technologies that are used, but at the same time, it's called a disruptor, that which interrupts an event or an activity. And I want to bring you in, Professor mm -hmm. Ngabidano. Mm -hmm. After that, good background. Mm -hmm. Was UMU was affected as all the other institutions by COVID-19? I earlier spoke of powering up the e-learning centers. Yeah. Were yours already powered up? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. As the Deputy Vice Chancellor has said, we have been running distance learning programs at our university. And uh, this has uh, taken years, and we're using that first generation way of uh, dealing with the distance learners, uh, making modules, producing them, giving them study material, then you go. But uh, towards the um, last two years, mm -hmm. we started seeing a way of moving to online. So we had started using online portals to to teach in some of the faculties, most especially in my school, the School of Arts and Social Sciences, mm -hmm. using Moodle, and also uh, using other faculty, other, 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 other platforms. So we are very lucky that um, we have been implementing two projects at our university. One project is called Transforming Employability for Social Change, mm -hmm. which is implemented in East African countries, majorly Uganda and Tanzania. And um, in Uganda, we are two universities, Uganda Matters University and Guru University. Whereas in Tanzania, we have also two universities, Muzumba University and the University of Dodoma. Then we have another project called PEDAR, uh, Pedagogical Leadership, uh, Pedagogical Leadership, where, where we are partnering with five universities across Africa and also some other sub-partners. In all, we are 32. And these projects were helping us to see how we can go online. Mm -hmm. um, so I said that we are using um, uh, Google Classrooms, but uh, Pedro had helped us go on Moodle. Mm. And then it helped us to look at Moodle, which is our learning management system, to go online. So during the pandemic, we were lucky that uh, when we were approached by National Council, National Council approached universities, those who want to go online, we, were, we fulfilled the requirements of National Council in Speedway because we were already prepared. Uh, and we got a license from National Council of Higher Education to do open distance and e-learning ordeal. And um, so we have been working on this. Mm. So, but that gave us more opportunity to return and, uh, and teach staff, academic staff, mm -hmm. students, how to go online. And we yeah. are using our management system, which is Moodle. Moodle. We are using uh, Zoom, uh, in te technically one of the call it synchronous. Mm -hmm. Synchronous, that is in time. You, you, you go on video, you face students, you talk, mm -hmm. and then asynchronous, that is remote teaching, where we are using Moodle. So we are doing very well. Uh, and I also am happy to say that we never lost a, academic, a, a semester of academic year. 
So after lockdown, mm -hmm. we continued up, uh, interacting with students online. Mm -hmm. So we finished on time. For example, now we are in the first semester of a new academic year. Okay, so that means this was spread across all the seven campuses? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and speaking, spreading it out across the seven campuses, uh, Vice Chancellor, the reception of this spreading out and reactions among us, the students or even the staff, would you say that, oh, this is something they were used to anyway, so it wasn't really new because according to reports in other institutions, students were up in arms. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Mabel. Um, Uganda Matters University, as uh, my colleague has said, uh, was blessed to have had an initial preparation yeah. uh, for online teaching and learning. Oh, speak to the e-learning policy yes, also, that they, guides you yes, know, they, yeah, the they, they, So we had begun the process of uh, online teaching and learning, mm. and uh, it was uh, only for a few faculties uh, that uh, initially began and mainly in a few campuses. But when COVID set in, uh, we immediately began to roll out across our faculties and across our campuses. Um, as you rightly said, at the beginning, there were a bit of uh, challenges, uh, ad adapting and, and adjusting and changing to the new uh, requirements, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the faculty members were required to redesign their programs, their courses they are going to teach. Uh, to put them into a platform, online platform that can be uh, easily used. Um, the students had also challenges with the, the skills, uh, with the gadgets. With data. With data, with internet. Yeah. Um, some of the challenges were certainly beyond the university and beyond the students and beyond the staff. For instance, accessibility to internet yeah. will not be determined by the students or by the university. So those were real challenges that were initially affecting our, our implementation of online uh, teaching and learning. Um, the University Senate uh, was quick to respond to a comprehensive e-learning policy mm -hmm. to guide um, uh, the university uh, community in the implementation process. So Senate approved a, an e-learning policy um, that gives a clear direction on the uh, the, the obligations of the students, the obligations of the staff, and, 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 and the ICT um, support that was required uh, during this process. We paid a lot of attention to training and teaching mm -hmm. uh, for, to prepare both our students and staff. And I must say also to prepare our parents. Yeah. Uh, we had sessions in which we reached out to the parents and said, look, here, this is where we are going. This is how we are going to go. Join our online classes with the students and wow. see how we are going to go. The uh, par parents and, the, and their children? And their yeah. children, yes. Yeah. They, they joined in into orientation sessions mm. and we took them through, this is how we are going to go, this is what we are going to do. And we asked parents to support the children. How long where... did the orientation take before you decided that now officially Let's roll it out. I, I must say that it, it went on spontaneously and continuously. Okay. Uh, we didn't have a, a time to start and uh, we, we continued with the process. Mm -hmm. As we are orienting, um, we, are also, we also continued with the activities of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we combined the efforts together. As we are training the staff, we are, we are also... Um, uh, facilitating some of the classes to conclude the academic year. Okay. So that's how we proceeded um, uh, within this uh, process. There were challenges, mm. resistance from some of the staff, from some of the students, because of the, uh, the challenges of technology. Uh, change management is not easy, <laughs> but uh, as uh, more and more of the staff and the students got involved and got you know, acquainted and got uh, used to the system, and then the few who had the challenges and were, were uncomfortable were immediately uh, enrolled into the process. No cases of some students being left behind? Um, I, I, I must say that uh, we have not achieved 100% okay. 
That's some, honest. Some students have, not, have been left, yes. Mm -hmm. But we have given options and alternatives. Um, for those who have challenges with the technology and they cannot go purely online, mm -hmm. we have advised them to transform to the traditional distance learning oh. programs. Okay. So they can follow their program, but using the traditional distance learning with the modules, with the materials printed, or in soft copy given to them, and then they can be able to use. There are also those who, because of the coronavirus uh, situation, had the financial challenges, mm. and therefore could not cope, basically, with the, with the academic uh, rigor and the requirements. Yeah. And so they required, for, they required us to grant them um, years off uh, so that they can then reorganize themselves and come back. So we, we have received these cases, mm. uh, and, and, and we, we, we have given all the support that they need to proceed. Okay. Maybe I can speak to the challenges that... To the uh, resistance. The resistance and the challenges <laughs> that students are getting, even staff members. Yeah. You know, we're used to that face-to-face -face in the classroom. True, true. And that is the education that the Ugandan knows. That's what we knew. And it is very hard for most of uh, students to study from home and even most of the lecturers to facilitate from their own homes. And monitor and progress. And monitor progress and whatever. Mm. Uh, why? Because when you are at home, you also have some other obligations. Sure. You are cooking, a child is crying, you do. Multitasking becomes a very big problem. I tried to teach when I was in a village, and I found myself unable to balance between the village work and my academic life. Mm -hmm. So, And most students are facing this. So the are the complaints that we get on a daily basis mm -hmm. that uh, some students are facing when they are at home. And I also understand that even some universities within Uganda, those that have gone online, mm -hmm. some students have gone back they are in, in hostels nearby. Mm. Uh, maybe for us, we are a little bit lucky that the hostels are, it's, a, it's not a township. Exactly. We, it's <laughs> far, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I know that in most universities, students have come around. They are, Hoping that uh, uh, lecturers will call for a physical yes, meet in yes, the classroom. And also run away from those kind of uh, things Disru that can distract you from, uh, from doing your work. Mm. Mm. Okay, now let's talk about the what, like you said, students are used to the teaching now of practice-based, mm. lab-based, mm. work-based, mm. that at times needs this physical mate. How have mm. you been able to mm. handle that, even the assessment itself? That is like a challenge for many universities yeah. currently, um, especially those uh, faculties that deal with um, mathematics, mm -hmm. deal with the engineering, they need the practical work in laboratories. Yes. It's a problem for most universities. Um, one, um, they are paid for laboratories that are online. Okay. Uh, but these are not physical laboratories. Mm. So They're virtual. virtual. Virtual laboratories. Okay. So we are using them. But These are not really hands-on. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do at our university is that, um, for example, if you are doing agriculture, mm -hmm. so you do your own project at home, and it will be monitored actually virtually to see how what do you have there? Can you take pictures? Can you take a video and submit it on Moodle mm -hmm. so that the teacher sees actually what is being done and what you are doing? So there is nothing. There is something lost, but there is not, not everything is lost. Mm -hmm. So we do hope that uh, when uh, we come to the normal, normal, yeah. uh, maybe things will be clear. But we can also know that we can learn from the abnormal yeah. to do normal things. <laughs> 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 and there are actually rumors that there are those students that don't even want to get back to what Professor Ngabirano is calling normal, normal, yeah. that they want to continue with these <laughs> online teachings or even assessments. Is that true, Professor Mao? Yes, I, I actually, uh, both the students and the staff, uh, yeah. many of them have now appreciated uh, this new uh, normal. <laughs> uh, of online teaching, technology enhanced teaching and learning, and uh, the comfort with which you know teaching and learning is taking place mm -hmm. uh, for, for many people. Uh, at the convenience of your time, at the convenience of your place, 
the, the students can learn at night, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when it's, it's quiet and, you know, at their peace. Uh, they, they're able to uh, do their studies, access the, the materials online, uh, review the, the, the videos and so on, uh, so that they are, you know, up to date with the materials. So there are many who are not willing to return. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I see that, especially our mature uh, students, the postgraduate students, the master students who are working, mm -hmm. they have found this very, very useful. They are saving money in terms of transport uh, every weekend or every week to come to the university and access classes. Mm -hmm. They can now do that at their own uh, place of work or at home. So that is a saving for them, mm. and so they are comfortable with the with the, these new developments that yeah. uh, they can be able to continue their studies uh, uh, online. Okay. We are also discussing um, on the issue of practical uh, teaching and learning, or practice-based teaching and learning. We are also discussing with our stakeholders, the, the employers and the, and the communities, on how they can support our students uh, in internship. We know the traditional internship, for instance, requires the students to go True. and be placed in the, in, the, in the organization and learn from there. Mm. But we are also discussing the possibility of home-based uh, internship, okay. where the, the organization gives tasks to the, the students. Yeah. They do these tasks. They provide information and evidence of what they are doing and how they are doing it. Mm. And then they can supervise them remotely. Probably they can provide. even take on more, more, more numbers than, than even before. Precisely, mm -hmm. yeah. So as he said, this, uh, this uh, situation has also given us opportunities to think critically yeah. on new ways of doing things. And uh, we are seeing that quite a lot of things are coming out mm -hmm. from this experience on mm -hmm. how we can do things better um, in a more innovative way and less costly, mm. more efficient, and more convenient to the, uh, to the, to the different stakeholders. Okay. Maybe After listening I, to that, yeah, maybe, add, maybe that add, will also answer into add, the question I was going to ask. You can, you can add, I can add if it's, that. yeah, how this has actually, or how it projects into the future of Uganda's education, despite all the challenges that it's facing. That's a very nice uh, question. Uh, I want to draw from what he was saying, mm. the opportunity that you are getting out of this. Yeah. At Uganda Matters University, we have been facing a question and asking ourselves, what is the use of the assessment that we do at the end of each semester, or even during the course of the semester? Uh, the, question, the, the assessment we, we normally do traditionally are summative. You, they are focused backwards. Mm -hmm. you, you report what you have learned. You reproduce what you have learned, but they don't help you to see what are you going to use that knowledge for. Mm -hmm. So this online teaching is now helping us to see how we can help a student continue learning, even from an assessment. How do you continue learning? Instead of sitting for three hours, you write a paper, mm -hmm. you throw it back, then you forget about it. Mm -hmm. So, but this gives us an opportunity to see how do we uh, enhance continuous learning for somebody who has been doing journalism? How will this learning help you in mm. the future to continue opening wider your scope of knowledge, your scope of understanding, mm. and innovatively getting something new? Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity that we are, we are seeing around this. Yeah. And uh, our university is uh, really uh, very brave to take this route. Mm -hmm. and perhaps even influence the national way in which we are facing education mm -hmm. and uh, the results that come from education. And that is, that is that's what we are on. Okay. And this stems from these other projects I talked about, the, transformative, the, the transforming in private for social change. Do our students who come from our universities, are they suitable for the jobs that they do? Mm -hmm. So, and how do we link them to the community, to the industry? to whatever. And how can the industry, for example, come in and help us to build the curriculum that will help a student who comes from Ghana Matters University suitable mm -hmm. for employment or give an opportunity to this student to create his or her own employment. Yeah. So we, we don't depend on, uh, I will be employed here, I will be employed there, but what will I do using my education? 
So if you are taking course A or B, C, mm -hmm. what am I learning from this course that can help me in my future to do my own employment, even to employ others, rather than getting this paper and go on the streets of Kampara, the streets of Mbarara, the streets of Guru, looking for jobs from office to office. But you get the knowledge that will help you to do your own work as a person. Okay. Mm. Wow. And now there, this graduation on Friday. Yes. Professor, is this graduation within the time it was supposed to be, or did the disruptor in COVID extend a little bit, push it forward, or you can tell us? Um, I, I, I should say that really uh, our graduation, which is scheduled for uh, 18th of, of December 2020, this coming Friday, uh, was a scheduled uh, graduation. Uh, initially, it was uh, supposed to take place in November. Oh, okay. um, we have extended it by uh, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And these three weeks was to um, uh, address the, some of the delays as a result of the COVID situation. Yeah. Um, when, when, when it was inevitable to us that uh, some of the students had not completed Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, projects, for instance, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it was inevitable for us to extend it by three weeks um, to enable them to complete their projects, to enable them to complete uh, some of the remaining tasks, and uh, and allow the faculty to finalize the process of grading and 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 and, and preparing the the transcripts and and all that. Mm -hmm. So it, yes, we have adjusted, but you can see the adjustment was not significant. Uh, because we completed our semester mm -hmm. um, at the end of the year in, in July, and so we were able to prepare for the graduation. Okay. We have a total, um, we're expecting a total of 720 students mm -hmm. uh, to graduate on Friday. Uh, we have scheduled a second uh, uh, graduation, which will take place in April, uh, and that is to address also some of the challenges that other students had experienced. Uh, for instance, the students of education could not proceed to do their teaching practice, their school practice, because of the disruption of the education system. No. And that affected, for instance, that category of students could not proceed. Mm -hmm. And so we, we agreed that we should have our second graduation around that period of time to allow these uh, students to be able to, to complete their studies. We also pray that uh, the situation will change and the schools will resume and they, are, they will be able to have their learning experience or educational experience in the schools. Okay. Uh, so we are set for the graduation and we would like to invite uh, the public. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a virtual graduation <laughs> uh, uh, as a result of the situation. Uh, we are only going to have 100 people at the venue mm -hmm. um, of the graduation. Um, very few students uh, representing the rest and very few staff uh, representing the other staff. Um, a few uh, guests from outside uh, who will be uh, in there. Our guest of honor uh, will be um, the managing director of Centenary Bank. Um, he has accepted to grace our occasion and he will be our guest of honor. Our theme for this graduation is uh, like the Uganda Matters. Um, um, uh, we, we, we get strength mm. um, uh, from, um, from the Lord, from the Lord mm -hmm. and, 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 and we get guidance from the Lord. And we are looking forward that uh, uh, this graduation, this virtual graduation will be successful. Okay. Um, we, we are always uh, faithful that uh, our Uganda matters will stand by us, will guide us, will give us strength and um, um, and we achieve uh, what we are set to achieve. Okay. Yes. Well, Professor Ngavirano, your, par your parting shots ahead of, of course, your students who are not going to be there mm -hmm. uh, proudly waving. Probably they will be online somewhere. Of yes. course, NBS TV is going to be broadcasting live yes. on Friday, but generally amidst the pandemic, mm -hmm. what is uh, your final uh, remark? It is a very distressing for many students. Okay. I'm also not invited. I, I stay on the campus, but I'm You're not, not part of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be watching from a distance. Yeah, I will since be watching from, a, 
from from TV, <laughs> and I stay on okay. campus. Okay. So, but um, we take it the way it is. We 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 want the health of our students, sure. the health of our communities. We don't want anybody to die of this disease, and mm. we want that God keeps us safe. Yeah. So um, it is a, a new norm, yeah. and we hope we shall say we shall overcome the new norm to the to the normal normal. Okay. So that we <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> Professor. So if I'm one of the students graduating and I would want to be on the list of the lucky ones to be invited on campus. Yeah. What is the criteria? <laughs> um, if I may it, ask. It, it was quite a challenge, I must say, um, to define the criteria for I selecting know. a few students to represent the others. Yeah. Um, we took two, three um, key criteria. One was that we agreed that uh, these programs that uh, the students have been pursuing and they're going to receive awards from, have had class representatives or program coordinators. <laughs> okay. So we, we agreed that we invite the coordinators of these programs. Okay. So the students who we are coordinating these programs and are graduating have been invited. Mm -hmm. The second uh, criteria was the, the, the students' leadership, the union uh, president and uh, a few of the union leaders. Um, we have selected some to to represent the, the rest of the students. Mm. We also have campuses, so we have representation from the campuses. And we also have international students, and so we also identified some key uh, international students to represent that. As I said, uh, our, our theme uh, is like the Uganda Matters, uh, the Lord will stand by me and give me strength. Okay. So that's what is guiding us, and uh, we have appealed to all our students and all our staff to understand the circumstance in which we are and to accept that they can follow this uh, uh, graduation virtually. And we want to thank uh, NBS uh, that has uh, accepted to uh, broadcast the entire function live. Sure. And so our students out there, the parents, can watch um, the, the proceeding of the graduation ceremony live on NBS, mm. uh, starting from 10, uh, 10.45 up to 1 o'clock. Okay. That's when we shall broadcast the actual ceremony of uh, the graduation and awards. But the, the function starts uh, at 9 mm. with the Mass and uh, Holy Eucharist, and that is going to be broadcast live on Radio Maria. Mm. So okay. for those who want to follow uh, from the beginning, they can join Radio Maria and follow at the proceeding of our ceremony. Okay. And finally, virtual commencement of lectures. When is that taking place? Yes, thank you very much, Mabel. Um, today, we are uh, having a, our commencement lecture, uh, which will start at 11, um, up to 1 o'clock. And uh, we are glad to have uh, uh, Professor Balunya, the uh, principal of Makerere Business uh, school, Macquarie University Business School, who is going to be the chief uh, speaker of, okay. of the occasion. And we have our, the president of the Alumni um, Association, uh, Mr. Ambrose Chibuka, who is going to be part of the discussing uh, team uh, in this. And also the public is invited because it is virtual, it's online, mm -hmm. and it will be on our social media okay. platforms. All right, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Uganda Matters University in Kozi, Professor Michael Mawa, thank you so much for visiting us thank this you. morning. And Professor Ngabidano Maximiliano, mm -hmm. the strong Catholic name, the man who is mm -hmm. more Catholic <laughs> than his name. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome and thanks for visiting. Thank you. Thank you the Uganda Matters University in Kozi graduation is this Friday and it will be live right here on NBS television. Your political command center it will start at 10 45 a.m and of course you can follow all uh, uh, the whole event across the social media platforms of uganda matters university in kozi i wish you a very good morning my name is mebo Twegumiezake, and i'll say take care and love yourself at least a little bit no more programming continues mm -hmm.